Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And we're gonna have a fabulous interview today because with me is, and she's gonna go over her name, because even though she told me to pronounce it slow, <laughs> is Dawn, say it with me. Desolates. Desolates. So Macy. Very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me, mm -hmm. as a certified holistic health, health counselor, mm -hmm. okay, what does that bring to the table to someone who would be coming to see you? I mean, what, what kind of services would they get for you? What could they expect right. uh, to find? So what, um, what, what I do in my work is I offer um, a series of programs mm -hmm. and people come to me and they work with me over a period of time on their health concerns. We usually set up goals mm -hmm. and I hold them accountable. <laughs> and that could be a good thing, but you also assist them in kind of finding mm -hmm. out in um, what I like to call the real world, which it is, you know, in the everyday world, um, foods that will work well while they're trying to modify their maybe some bad habits they've picked up or to help them change a habit. Because, you know, everybody says, oh, it's so easy or it's, it's hard to change a habit. You have to do something for three months mm -hmm. in order for it to be established or... Right. Sometimes if you try on your own to find substitutes for things that you really like, you either just, you can't find the substitute or you're not sure. You yeah, know what I mean? Like I do. I do. So would In you fact, help somebody like kind of through that? Like if they were like a really heavy duty potato chip junkie and, <laughs> and they need to kind of say, okay, I need to portion control that or I need to find an alternative. Yep. Is that something you could work with? So I guess that would be like a behavioral Kind of yeah, thing. you know, I use a, a combination of behavior modification. I use um, also just, you know, holding you accountable to your to your goal. If you state, for instance, that you want to be healthier and we acknowledge that potato chips aren't the healthiest option for you, then we substitute um, healthier choices. But more so than substituting, I like to use the, the phrase crowding out. So, oh. for instance, if I were to say to you, Ramona, you need to eat six servings of vegetables every day. Well, by the time you finish your six servings of vegetables and you meet that goal, you may not want the potato chips at all. That's true. That's true. In, in a way, it's, you're kind of eating what you need to eat first. Yeah, eat what you need to eat first. And I like that crowding out. Crowding out. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, you know, it works particularly well with um, people who are addicted to soda. If I were to say to you, eight glasses of water, by the time you finish your eight glasses of water, you don't want the soda. <laughs> well, you don't drink them all at once, obviously. <laughs> you True enough. <laughs> you space them out during the day. Exactly. But, but you are quenching your thirst. Uh, yeah, yeah. In one way or another. Now, people, people who have a particular medical condition mm -hmm. that may come, maybe they have a food allergy or food sensitivity, which is very common today. Mm -hmm. um, how would you handle them? You're not an MD, so what does being certified mean, and how does that make a difference? Yeah, being a certified holistic health counselor, um, for one thing, it offers me credibility, but for another thing, it also um, shows that I have an affiliation with the school that I attended. It was the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, it's an arm of Columbia University, and they stand by my work. They mm -hmm. offer ongoing um, education opportunities and connections to the most up-to-date nutrition information. Okay, so you're kind of always relearning, relearn Con learning new yeah. things constantly. Yeah, it's a, you know, the nutrition field is, is rapidly changing all the time. There's always new information, and it's very important to stay, you know, current with that. Okay. And you know, in your, in your brief bio, it, it says that you study both mm -hmm. Eastern and Western nutrition, which means that you can handle a clientele that's very varied. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and how do you find working with that? Do you, I mean, do you blend the two? Is it? Yeah, I do. You know, and that's the word holistic. That's part of that. Um, you know, we work on the physical body, but we also work on the emotional and the spiritual body. So in the physical body, we talk about food and nutrition. Mm -hmm. In the physical body, we might talk about going to bed earlier. Um, and in the emotional body, we talk about a lot of those emotional connections to comfort foods, so mm -hmm. that compulsive eating, that emotional eating. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the spiritual body is concerned, I offer a lot of um, exercises for mindful eating so that it becomes a meditative practice as well, you know, that you are connecting truly with your food and with your body. Yeah. And we talk about those food sensitivities and food issues 
and um, you know some of the testing that's available for food sensitivities. But what I like to offer is um, elimination challenge. And mm -hmm. so you know, take it out of your diet, and if you feel great, then maybe you shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> <laughs> could be. It could simply be that simple. It could be that simple. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, books out today, written today. There's mm -hmm. a lot of wealth of experience. And there's a lot of different foods. There's a lot of different ethnic foods. It's mm -hmm. nice because you can cross into other foods and try other cultures' foods and find that, you know, you, you can eat those. Sure. As opposed to something that you might not do. Do people keep a journal with you when they go through a program? I mean, it, is there a way for them to keep a record? Do they keep like a yeah. meal plan record? Or is mm -hmm. it like very different for each person depending on what they are seeking your yeah. expertise for? It's a very individualized process. I really work with the client and their personal needs. And if journaling works for a client, then we certainly use it. Some clients, you know, that's kind of tedious. But I will say that... Um, my most successful weight loss clients are those that really keep track of what they eat. But as far as fat or calories, or, or you don't even like go there? Mostly, yeah, we don't really go into fat and calories and those sorts of things. Um, it's more making the connection to whenever your hand touches food and brings it to your mouth. So we try to create um, a gap in that so it's not so blinded. Oh, okay. And so you might, and so in, in part of what you're talking about before is slowing down when you mm. eat. Mm -hmm. uh, now, does this also kind of roll into picking uh, healthier foods, better choices when you pick your food? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you're slowing down and taking your time, you're going to make a better choice because you want that. You want that goal. You want to be healthy. And that's the first thing that we establish okay. is your desire to be healthy. And and we talk a lot about, like, what would you do with that if you were healthy, if you didn't have chronic fatigue or if you didn't have migraine headaches, if you didn't have constant stomach issues, wh what would you do with that? You know? How would you live your life? Oh, how would you live your life? Oh, I understand. I understand. Yeah. It's kind of getting you out of the... The, the cycle. Uh, the cycle. The repetition yeah. of, of always being... Yeah. I am a migraine person. I am yeah. a person with stomach issues. Like, well, it's, what if you weren't? You know, what would you do? Oh, boy, I would not have to think about food so much. <laughs> I can tell you that right now from experience. Right? Because, yeah, because I went through a whole period where that was, it consumed me. Yeah. Trying to figure out what would work. And I understood that it was a learning curve that you go through. But, I mean, at some point I had mm -hmm. to stop and say, no, you, you have to stop this because you're now limiting yourself. I mean, I wouldn't even go out to eat. I wouldn't even eat yeah. outside of everything and I would become so frustrated that I would have to so finally I just said no you, you need to change this mm -hmm. way of thinking and roll with it don't yeah. fight it yeah and you know I understand that I have had my own personal health issues um, for most of my life I was 30 pounds or more overweight my mm -hmm. family loves to cook. I grew up cooking. It's a very um, emotionally comforting thing for my family. And, you know, my desire and passion for cooking and doing the cooking classes is mm -hmm. because my family, yeah. you know, it's, I just love it. I love to teach people that. I think I'm good at it. Um, so, you know, I've had to develop a healthy relationship with food and with that part. But I also had a serious health crisis about four years ago. I was diagnosed with Addison's disease which is also called adrenal insufficiency. Mm -hmm. And through that process, I had to dis, um, you know, discover what was the lifestyle that worked for me, as well as what were the foods that supported my adrenals were. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them is I had to uh, eliminate gluten. Oh, yeah. And that's a huge challenge for people. And it I, is. It's a better now, but it is a huge challenge. Yes, it is much better now. And there's lots of, um, the restaurants have done a wonderful job with, you Many know, have, yeah. you know, making it a, an opportunity to go out to eat. But, you know, even cooking at home and serving food to, you know, nine out of nine, if you invite 10 friends over, you're one <laughs> and there, you're nine yeah. people who can eat gluten. So it's like how to, how to do that, how to celebrate and right. still be gluten free. And, and how to, sometimes too, you can even incorporate some of the things, some of the gluten-free things in with, not, you don't cross-contaminate, but the point is that you can introduce people to Absolutely. some of the gluten-free products. Yeah. And sometimes they can tell, like with the noodles, you can't, I don't think you can tell, but you know, everybody's yeah. different. You know, my kids at the center, I bring them cookies. You know, oh, I like these. Yeah. I said, that's good, they're gluten-free. I can't eat them, they have butter in them, go to town. Absolutely. You know, my son is highly allergic to cow dairy, and so we've had to negotiate that, too. He had um, 
He's had a couple of food allergy issues and also yeast overgrowth from antibiotic use, which mm -hmm. was a kind of like that long cycle of ear infections from being allergic to the cow dairy. So wow. this past Thanksgiving, we I celebrated um, Thanksgiving with 16 of our family, and it was 100% gluten-free and dairy-free. And let me tell you, <laughs> it was a slam dunk. It was delicious, gourmet, top of the line um, Thanksgiving meal. and. You would not have known. You would yeah. not have known. Because you're just enjoying the flavor of the food. Mm -hmm. Which brings us into right. your cooking classes because yeah. this is something that someone can come to you and say, you know, these are the restrictions. I have. They could be a diabetic. Mm -hmm. they, could, they could have cancer and, and want to eliminate certain things. They could have allergies. They could have sensitivities. They could be yep. gluten-free. There's many irritable bowel syndrome. There's a lot of things. Yes. And they can come to you and say, you know, set me up with a program where I can bring you my food or we can go through food that I can eat and I want to be able to do that. I desire to do that mm -hmm. Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, exactly. You know, where I don't have to make a meal for me and a meal for no. somebody else. That's no fun. It it's isn't no any fun. fun. You're right. And, mm -hmm. But that's a learning curve to do that, mm -hmm. to be able to do that and to be able to know how to pick those ingredients. So talk to us about how someone could get into a program with you and, and do that. And they could do that like once mm -hmm. or a couple of times or... Yeah. You know, there's um, two ways that a person, well, three ways really that a person can work with me. But essentially we can work one-on-one -on -one in a client situation. Um, you know, and it's similar to us sitting here, only we talk about your, um, your food issues, mm -hmm. how to circumvent that. I would give you recipes and that sort of thing. But then you could also come to the cooking classes and they're very open. I welcome people with food issues and food sensitivities and I'm happy to eliminate and show, show you that it, it's quite delicious. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. what they can do and what mm -hmm. they can substitute one for another. Yeah, you know, one of the things I've learned um, is that it has to be, all my food has to pass what I call the GP test. The GP test, okay. The, the GP test means it has to be suitable for the general public, not just for a person with a, uh, a food issue. Okay. So if it's not delicious, we don't do it. <laughs> so does that mean everything is sweet? No, I'm only kidding. Uh, right, <laughs> right. Um, no, but you know, there, because you know, sugar is certainly yeah. a, a big health culprit mm -hmm. and we need to look at that. We, we look at um, sweet alternatives like sure. honey and um, different things like that. Yeah. Stevia is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, instead of making a pie crust that's like flaky and flour based, I make a pie crust that's based out of sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and maybe butter or maybe ghee or maybe coconut oil, depending mm -hmm. on the, the type of fat that's tolerable. Right. So, so there's a lot in this. Mm -hmm. And how many years have you been doing this? Yeah, I've been certified for five years. I've been seeing clients for five years and I've been doing the cooking classes out of my home for, I'm in my fourth season. Fourth season, yeah. so that's really exciting. And of course, we're gonna have some pictures rolling in so that, you know, as we're all talking about this, you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, now you do, you also work with kids, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a father and son can bond and come and, and cook, Yeah. you know, which, which is nice. Uh, and also you, would, you, you had talked about working with preteens. Tell me how that kind of came about and... Yeah, I, you know, I love working with young people. I think it's so important for them to be in touch with their food. I think they, they make better health choices or better food choices when um, they know how to cook and they feel some control and choice over that. And I also think that, you know, when you're growing at such a rapid pace in your middle years and your teenage years or even young children, you know, mm -hmm. but it, when they're young, you, you, the parents have a lot of control. It's sort of in that middle school mm -hmm. age that, you know, a lot of the parental influence isn't, you know, isn't there. So. I love working with that middle school um, group. Uh, now you had some girls come in and make some brown, uh, some cupcakes. Yes. Now what what kind of spurred that on? Did they come to you? Did mm -hmm. one come with the mom? And then, you know, and why cupcakes? And and why those ingredients in those cupcakes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of my friend's daughters was turning 13, and she loves cupcakes. And they heard about the um, the sweet alternatives baking class that I do. So we put on a special baking class for for um, my friend's daughter and she invited another one of her friends and mm -hmm. their mom. So we had a special little um, sweet alternatives class and the cupcakes that we made were made with uh, chickpeas and chocolate and we stuffed them with a peanut butter based frosting. So, you know, they had the protein from the chickpeas and the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. They were lightly sweetened with honey and they were quite delicious. So 
you so much, Dawn, for coming on. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. You, My pleasure. Thank you. Give us your website again just before we close. Okay, www.newdawnnutrition.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much, and right. good luck. Thanks. Same to you. I am Ramona, and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.